our students, the, the students in our programs need to know right now that we're glad they're there and we're going to take care of them. And they don't need to be scared. I, you know, COVID was scary in, in a band room where we're blowing aerosols. So this is, it's great right now to be able to say, we got this. Dr. Mary Land is one of the top voices in music education right now. From her years of experience as a middle school and high school band director, to then taking on a role of training future music teachers, she has dedicated her life to the betterment of music education. And I, for one, consider myself very lucky to have her as my music ed professor at Western Michigan University. That's why I'm so glad I had this great opportunity to sit down with her and have a conversation on topics such as finding a mentor, the role of the teacher, as well as her new book, Habits of a Successful Music Education Student. So please sit back and enjoy today's featured conversation with me and Dr. Mary Land. Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Zachary Savinsky and today I am joined by Dr. Mary Land. Dr. Land, how are you today? I'm fantastic, Zachary. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing really well. It was a great uh, past week here we had at the Con Selmer Institute, I think. Uh, a few days of rejuvenation. It was great. Absolutely. Well, without further ado, let's get into some of these questions I have for you here. Um, just to start with some introductory questions, um, tell us a little about yourself, your career history, and where you are in your career right now. Okay, um, I have been a band director for most of my life mm -hmm. and uh, started as a middle school band director. I taught at the same school in uh, rural North Georgia, Title I school, for 29 years. Uh, then I made the move into higher ed and um, I taught right um, north of Atlanta at a small university for seven years and I've just completed my fourth year at Western. Awesome, that is great. And we are very lucky to have you here at Western. What would you say is the biggest takeaway from teaching middle school, high school for so long? You know, I think it's the knowledge of all the instruments. I think it's technique knowledge of all the instruments because you have to know details on on every single instrument and I also think it's um, years of learning to work with people mm -hmm. and learning to work with students and learning to create safe spaces for your students absolutely that's really great so obviously you had a really great experience teaching in the middle school level and were very successful at doing so so what drew you to leave that after so much success and then go teaching higher ed and teaching future educators? You know, it seemed like a, the natural progression, the natural move. I, I had 42 student teachers while I was in public school. Um, sometimes I had two of them per semester. And wow. that may sound like they did not get a would not get too big of an experience, but they did. We had a, a, a large program and the student teachers were always heavily involved. And after mentoring these student teachers, I really, I re and they were all coming from different institutions. So I was ready to, I felt like I, I could tell what they knew and where their weak points were. Mm -hmm. And I was ready to jump in and help to prepare them to be successful teachers. So what do you enjoy most about this current season of life that you're in, both professionally and personally? Uh, it's very fulfilling to see my students graduate, mm. become employed, begin teaching music, and be excited about it. Uh, it is also really fulfilling to see my students get it. They get the value that they're providing to their students. Mm -hmm. So. I, that, that's that's where I am right now. And I, I, I'm really devoted and dedicated to teacher preparation and digging research and doing as much as I can to make sure that the future teachers, they have a toolbox packed full. For this next question, I don't want to ignore the fact that this field of being a band director has been historically male dominated mm -hmm. and Obviously, I don't know firsthand what that feels like. So let me ask, how has being a female band director in a somewhat still male-dominated field uh, been challenging and rewarding for you? I'll tell you, 
I just all I want I just wanted to be a band director. And mm-hmm. and whenever I, I entered into it, I the the male f- female was never even on my radar until you're at a uh, a, a conference uh, and or a competition or a festival and there's tons of men bathrooms and no women or one woman so that and that's a that's a, a funny part of it but I you know um I, I worked I struggled my very first year looking for my own mentor mm-hmm. I couldn't find anybody that looked like me and I did finally f- find one uh, female band director that would come and observe my teaching and offer me feedback um but it, it and this person was on the way out of their career so, so that did not last long I, I felt like i was um carving my own path mm-hmm. and the longer i have been in this profession the more i have connected with mentors unfortunately the time that i needed them the most in my beginning teacher they there was no one mm-hmm. i had a lot of um of male f- band director friends who treated me as as part of the band director community without any discrimination at all and you know that that was my that was my comfort area that was my my tribe my group would you say it's important for aspiring uh female band directors to find a mentor who is female i think it really is i think i think it is sometimes um you know, they're sometimes being empowered with confidence can come from someone that you can completely connect with mm-hmm. and you can relate to. Um, there are lot, there's tons of challenges in education right now. And if you can find that mentor, I, I like to call that your own personal board of directors. I think it's, I think it's okay to have more than one mentor. Oh, absolutely. And, and these, these personal board of directors are people that will, answer whenever you call or you text um so more than one mentor is great Uh, maybe you can have one that's um specifically for the grade levels you're teaching maybe it's a teacher that's um not even teaching music Mm. maybe it's a person that has already retired and can offer you um you know just a go-to for support but um get those mentors and i would if i was a young woman in the band business right now i would try to reach out to someone that's an experienced woman teacher but i would not limit that i would have multiple mentors that's really great advice Mm -hmm. i think and i think we're also seeing um the population of band directors change i see far more women right now being band directors i I, I see respect extended to women's for many years females were the assistant band director or the middle school band director mm-hmm. and there are more and more high school band directors right now is we're, we're closing in on the gap um, male versus female mm-hmm. so go everybody <laughs> yeah, absolutely that's how I grew up actually to my step grandma was a band director and then my band director through all seven years of school was also a female. Oh, that's fantastic. So yeah. I, I just, I grew up with that. And then mm-hmm. like I came to Western and noticed that, oh, it's not like that everywhere. Yeah, so. yeah you're, you're right. And, and I'll tell you what, I was, when I came to visit Western um, for my job interview, I, I was in my brain was circling around and around. They, they need me here. They need a female in this position Mm -hmm. um, for all of our female students. All right, so moving on to some questions more so about music education as a whole. Mm -hmm. Um, In our methods classes, you talk to us and me and my colleagues a lot about how important our philosophy of education is. Mm -hmm. So, and I was just wondering in like one or two sentences, what is your philosophy on music education and why? We are in the people business and the music business. We teach our students to become strong musicians and strong people. Our first goal should be to get to know our students, accept our students, respect our students. And when we make these personal connections with our students, we've created lifelong relationships, 
which will provide the opportunity for great music making. Yeah, that harkens back to, I know, another phrase that you always say to us of what something Dr. Tim says a lot of connecting before you correct. Mm -hmm. It's very much the same thing of being in the people business first, making relationships. I know that's something that we talked actually a lot about at the Conselmer Institute. It's just really important. It it really is. And I think more so now than it was 10 years ago Mm -hmm. and way more so now than it was 20 years ago or even 30 years ago. Um, I, I have watched things evolve and the way that band directors are teaching today and make creating strong relationships with their students is the way to teach uh many years ago it wasn't like that it was just come in and make music and a big disconnect uh students today can have you know, they choose to be in our room and they can choose not to be there mm-hmm. so connecting with them and providing them that space that safe space where they feel like they can make a mistake and it's okay and they can learn from it um is is huge and it seemed like at con summer every every other session was on relationships and that's because we have to do it yeah for sure it's just really important i think we're seeing a trend more so of that being more of a focus Mm -hmm. in classrooms uh even from like my um, pre-intern experiences this last year and teaching, I think it does more of an emphasis and getting out of COVID as well. Right. More of an emphasis on relationships mm-hmm. over the craft itself. Exactly. Who would you say has have been the most influential people to this point for you? I, you know, I'm going to take it all the way back to when I was in seventh grade. My very first trumpet teacher was Benny Ferguson. Okay. And uh, he was a graduate student at the University of South Carolina. And, uh, I, you know, I don't think, you know, this, this young teenage girl, just barely a teenager, teaching this person was not um, probably at the top of his list of things to be doing as a graduate student. But then we stayed, we, we remained connected um, throughout my career. He moved into, uh, he was a fantastic band director and um moved into administration within my state and has always kept in touch with me. And in fact, um, I would say we're really good friends, um, his family and my family. And when I was looking into moving to Western, he, he was the first person that said, take that job. It's a great place. It's a music education. Go there. And that was really sealing the deal for me to come here. So Dr. Ferguson, he was a, a strong influence um, on my life, and he was uh, he kind of, of he had high expectations, and he impressed upon me that the most important part of my job is the safety and well-being of the students in my care, which goes back to people business and the music business. So I, I'd have to go with him, and then a close second influence on me would be my parents. My parents saw that music was important to me, and they made every effort and great sacrifices to get provide for me. Um, Lessons, camps, and support. Um, They wrote my very first band concert that I had as a public school teacher and my very last one. So it, it would, and they would make great sacrifices so that I could do what I wanted to do. That's, that's really great. Yeah. Support is really important. Mm-hmm. From people that you value. What advice, I mean, we already kind of touched on the whole topic of mentors, mm-hmm. um, but what advice would you give to young teachers who are trying to find mentors? What should they be looking for in a mentor? I think they need to look for a mentor. Number one, a person that is willing to be, that answers the phone when you call. Mm or answers the text or responds to your email. A person that is available, okay? There's so many people right now, so many teachers right now that are slammed in every direction. Um, And I think they would want to be a mentor, but they're just, time is infringing. So a person that's available and willing. Also look for a mentor that has the career that you wanna have. Mm. You know, if you you see a person, like for me, I was looking for, a person that, that that was me, that was a family person. 
and to see how they balance things, how, how do they balance their life. Um, also, look, look for a person that, that values the skills that we have to have to be successful teachers. Yeah. Um, but mostly find that mentor that has what you want to be. So I know you hold very active roles in many different organizations, such as NAFME, uh, SLAM, which is new, mm -hmm. um, as well as being a, one of the board of directors for the Midwest Clinic. Um, how would you say having those roles has helped you become a better director and a better educator? Well, I think it's connected me with the best people in the business. And I, I, I have the great opportunity to, to listen to these people, how they think, what, what, how they plan, um, it, and to have common goals. The, these, the people that I work with in these organizations want music education to be top. They want our teachers to be the best. And we can collectively, we collaborate, we put our heads together, we come up with ideas. And I, I believe it has influenced, and I know it has made my teaching stronger. It has given me um, opportunities to provide for my students. And, um, you know, it's just the people that I would like to be with. Mm -hmm. For sure. I get these lights back on. Yeah. There we go. You know, I, I, and I would like to add about these organizations. Uh, it's, it's important to be lifelong learners. And the, this past week, being at Conselmer Institute, I hope you I hope everyone noticed that the presenters did their sessions, but then they also went to others. Yes, I did notice. And that, yeah. it is a non nonstop Conselmer Institute is a nonstop learning experience for everyone. Not even just in the sessions, but like hanging out. You know, how did you do this? What did you play? Um, do you like this piece of music? Did this work well? Um, all, you know, all of that goes in goes into play. Coming out of a pandemic. Uh, obviously, we know we talked about students need um, relationships with their teachers. Teachers need to focus on having relationships. But from what you've observed, what do students need the most from music right now? They need to be accepted. Mm -hmm. I think what they need in our classrooms right now, and, and I said this earlier, they need to feel that there's a safe space for them for them to learn, for them to know that it's okay if they make a mistake because they're a work in progress, they're a work in process. And we need to we need to let them know we're glad they're there. And I think at, at Con Selmer, we, we heard that right and left. We would hear the presenters say to the attendees, we're so, we're so happy you're here. Yes. Um, I'm about to um, start a six week long um, teaching up at Interlock and, and I, First, I've been thinking about how I'm, how I'm going to go through my very first rehearsal. And the first thing I'm going to say is I'm so glad you're all here. Yeah. Um, all camps, all summer music camps are struggling with enrollment right now. And I've, I've spoken to many people in charge of their university camps or whatever the camps may be. And they all decided we're just going to do it. We're going to make this get back into it. We have two years. We've had two years without camps. Let's go ahead and hold this one and get it being a normal again yeah so our students the, the students in our programs need to know right now that we're glad they're there and we're going to take care of them and they don't need to be scared I, you know covid was scary in in a band room where we're blowing aerosols so this is it's great right now to be able to say we got this yeah i think that's all really great advice really important for the students to just feel like they're wanted. Mm -hmm. I think that's a huge thing, just feeling and, wanted. And, and the value of each one. Mm -hmm. Because they, they but th then again, y you as a teacher have to take time to get to know that student and find out all that they're bringing to your program. Yeah. And then let them know how valuable they are to the whole program. So what would you say is an area of music education that you are actively trying to change for the better? In other words, what are, what in music education brings you the most joy in getting to do? Okay, we need better teachers. We need better music teachers. And my mission, my goal is to make sure that our teachers are prepared 
and they go out into the workforce and they're successful. They have the tools to go in there and be outstanding teachers. Um, and outstanding, what does that mean? Um, they've connected with their students. Their students enjoy being in their program and they're making music at a, good, at a great level, a good high level. That's great, yeah. And again, I just wanna reiterate how thankful we are to have you here at Western. Well, and I, I'm the thankful one. I'm very grateful to be here. Thank you, Zachary, thank you. Yeah, getting to learn from you the past however many years, even just this last year in Methods has been a really great moment. We've, had a, we've had a good year. Yeah, it was a, a really good year. good year. So this kind of, I think, is like a big question, this next one. What advice would you give to that next generation of future music teachers? Okay, first thing, when you get your very first job, don't try to change too much your very first year. Hmm. You're the change. And we have to remember that it's not our band room, it's our, it's our band's band room. Hmm. And if you want to, if you go into the, the new job and you see things you want to change, include your students on, in on changes. Let them help make these um, decisions because, again, it's, it's their place. Now, the next thing I would do would be I would, I would encourage every music education student, particularly their last year in classes, to be involved in every part of music education step out of your comfort level, pick up an instrument that you've never played, maybe something that you feel insecure playing and, and play that, learn that secondary instrument, mm -hmm. um, become active, dedicated members of different organizations at your university, the NAFME organization, be see NAFME, be, be a part of it. Um, go to professional development. And once you get, go now, but then once you get your job, just put it on the calendar. When you meet with your administrator at the beginning of the school year, professional development days that I need to go to are, and put it out there. Um, get, call these mentors. Have them come and watch you teach. Mm -hmm. Call me. <laughs> I want to go and watch. I want to watch the students teach and, and then talk to them about it. Um, we've had this gap in instruction, in face-to-face -face instruction. And many of the teachers that are teaching right now, the first time they've taught person in person was in their first job they didn't get that experience yeah. um and so call people to come and watch uh record yourself yes just put your phone up record yourself and then go back and watch uh keep great notes i'm i'm a big believer in teacher planners and writing down what you did on specific days and do get get a teacher planner where you can go back and write in this did not work do not do this next year or i wish i had done whatever but keep keep that planner um have a life out of your classroom mm -hmm. um you need it um have a whole entirely different life um i i had great friends whenever I was um, in public school that didn't teach at my school. They were not teachers, and we would get together specific afternoons, and we, we, we were strong runners. And we used to go and, uh, you know, every Saturday was a road race. Yeah. And it, it gave me something out of the profession. Take care of yourself. Get out of the band room every day during school. Go to lunch. Get out. Um, laugh have fun and let your students see that you're real go to events that your students are involved in that are not with your band mm -hmm. if they're on the basketball team go to the ball game if um they're involved in the school play or musical go to it and make sure they see that you're there stay around afterwards or the next day make a comment to them you were great in the play last night. I had no idea you could memorize all those lines when we've been working on these scales. You, I, now I know you can play those scales. Um, you can memorize those too if you've memorized all these lines. So follow up with all that you do. Um, coming back and talking with your students about what, they were, what you observed them do. Yeah. I think that's a huge part of building relationships with them. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, if they tell you something, always have a follow up something or question. You know, my parents are out of town this week. Really, are they going on business? Or are they going on vacation? 
who's staying with you or, or are you staying with a friend? Just follow up with whatever information they're telling you so they can tell you more because that's what they want to do. Yeah, absolutely. I just kind of want to touch upon a couple of the things that you mentioned. I think for me this last year, one of my saving graces was having friends outside of this school of music. Mm-hmm. having friends that aren't music majors mm-hmm. and just being able to hang out with them and not have to worry about the things that were happening on here. Right. Well, you know, a music major, music education major is hard. Mm-hmm. It's, um, it's two degrees in one. It's an education degree and a music degree. Yeah. And it's a five year degree crammed into four years. It's, 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 um, it's stressful. It's long days, lots of one hour classes, no other degree has all those one hour classes. Um, And these are one hour classes that meet multiple times a week. Then you have your performance ensembles. Mm -hmm. Then you have your own recitals, your juries. It's, it's a hard degree. And if you don't get out of this group, you don't, you're not really going to be able to fully relax. So it is enormously important to have these friends and groups out of the school of music. I would also mention too, going back to your point on recording yourself teach. Again, to mention the Conselmer Institute, but mm-hmm. I, I don't remember who said it, but somebody mentioned uh, to record yourself and then play it back when you get back home and then sit in your own rehearsal. And then, are you bored? Oh, are you not playing a lot in this section? Mm-hmm. Are you focused? Oh, they're focusing on the clarinets again. Mm-hmm. Like sit in your own rehearsal. I think yeah. that is like one of the best things I've heard ever. I, th- I think that's brilliant. I think that's great. And it's, it, I mean, it's clear, honest, the truth. Um, you know, we've all been in rehearsals. You as a percussionist, you've been in rehearsals where you never played a thing. <laughs> yeah. And we wonder why there's behavior trouble back there, mm-hmm. way far away on a whole different, I think Dr. Tim called it a whole different island. <laughs> so, or a, a different zip code, an entirely yeah. different zip code back there. So, yeah, record and watch it. And then it doesn't hurt to show it to your mentors. Yeah. Let them see it and make comments. For sure. All right. So moving on to our next set of questions, we're going to be focusing now on your new book that you are releasing uh, with uh, your co-author, Scott Rush, Mm -hmm. with GIA Publications. It's going to be a part of the Habit series titled Habits of a Successful Music Education Student. Mm -hmm. And this book, me and my classmates actually had for this last year before it was published and we gave you lots of notes, <laughs> I would say. Which was great. Yeah. Which is great. For sure. Um, so just to start off, what would you say motivated you to create this book? Well, when I first started teaching um, music education methods, I couldn't find the textbook that was offering students practical um, knowledge, things that they needed to know. I found a lot of textbooks that were loaded with philosophy, history of edu- music education, but not the, the tools. Mm-hmm. And so I ended up, I was pulling from different um, textbooks and I would call the authors and ask if I could have permission to use this little section here and make a course pack. Yeah. And, um, I would always contact Scott Rush. And he finally said uh, about three or four years ago, hey, can we just stop this? Let's let's just create it. And I said, I was was excited. I said, with me? Can I do it? (laughs) And so it was great to collaborate with. Scott Rush is a brilliant music educator. He is one of the finest musicians you could ever find. And he's methodical. And we have like philosophies on teaching so we started just putting things together I took the syllabus that I would use had been using for my classes and divided them up into different chapters and then attempted to provide as many resources for the students so that's kind of how this whole thing was born yeah that's really great um I think that's speaks to just doing what you think you need Mm -hmm. and just like oh there needs to be a book out there for music education students for mm-hmm. their classes. I'll just make it yeah. if I don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's really, that's essentially what we, what, what we did. And we reached out to people that um, have been 
very successful public school teachers. I mean, that's we don't need to be reaching out to anybody else other than those that are doing the job. Mm -hmm. And so we, we got a lot of comments from them. And then we took the years that we were teaching and yeah. and the, the challenges that we had and attempted to make sure that our students weren't going to have those challenges. We're going to prepare them for it, tell them, you know, this is this is the mouthpiece, this is the embouchure, this is the, the alternate fingerings, um, this is classroom management, these are the procedures for your class, this is the teaching data inventory base, and just go on through it. And it, it works, it's worked out. That's I good. hope, I hope it's going to be good. Yes, I'm, I'm really excited about it. I think, I mean, having gone through the book all of last year, I think there's so much great information good. in there. I can't wait to see the finished product and have it in my hands. Yes, <laughs> that'll be really great. Mm -hmm. So obviously this is a part of the larger habits series that Scott Rush really has been the creator of. Mm -hmm. um, what would you say is it is about that series, like Habits of a Beginner Band Musician, Habits of a Middle School Musician, all of those books for bands and orchestra. What is it about that series that you really like? It's logical. It's sequential. Mm -hmm. It is relevant. Uh, the teacher's book to the habits of the successful beginning band student, the teacher's book explains how to explain rhythm in such a, a simple fashion that I don't think anybody has ever thought of. Mm -hmm. And it's everything is spelled out so easily. Now, another great thing that Scott Rush has done is he's got um, habitsuniversal.com, yes. the website, loaded with tons of free information and resources for everyone. You don't even have to use the book mm -hmm. and they're accessible for everyone. But I think using the book would be a good thing. Um, I, I have taught from the, um, the beginning book. I have taught from the middle school book. Mm -hmm. The bands that I taught with both of those books got better faster. And the students, it is written so that everything falls under their fingers in a logical way. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, uh, I'm very fond of all of the accompaniment tracks. I, I think I think those, those are a plus, a plus plus on everything. But really the, the middle school book, I love the way uh, you, you can be focused on a specific rhythm. Let's say a dotted, a dotted eighth followed by 16th note. And it's just rhythms written. You can count it. You can play it all on one note. You can play up a scale. Each measure, you're going up a scale. And then you take that rhythm and it's put into a melody using the exact same rhythm. So it's, it's just logical. I, yeah. I really like it. Now, he, there's also a habits book for um, high school students, too, that yes. is that is got some really great corrals in there. Wonderful warm ups. So they're good. Yeah. I, I mean, for our instrument tech classes, we now go through the book mm -hmm. for those classes just so we get used to it. And when we eventually teach it. And I would say initially I was very apprehensive to mm -hmm. that. I was just like, oh, they're just putting this book down our throats or whatever. But um, I really started to fall in love with the book as we went along with it, um, speaking to the beginner one. Mm -hmm. And I would say, especially coming from a percussionist, I think it's the most logical percussion method book out there. Yeah, it is. I love, I love the percussion book. I love the fact that it is incorporating all percussion instruments early. Yes. And the way that they, they teach grip is just, it's simple. It's, yep. it's not too many words. It's quick little phrases, and, and they have it. Your students will remember it. And, you know, Zachary, in trying, part of what, I, what I, was, I have been trying to do in our music education program here is for the instrument tech classes to all use the same book. Mm -hmm. And then when you all arrive in methods class, then we use the teacher's book. Yes. And that way you would have seeing what your students are going to see and then when you are about to step out and be the the band director now you're looking at the director's book yes and slowly <laughs> slowly all that is uh, is coming coming together but i think that is going to be key in our graduates just throwing it down when they graduate yeah. uh there's not going to be that learning curve uh whenever and I think I told you this earlier, whenever I was student teaching as a trumpet player, I had a student ask me a fingering on, on clarinet and I didn't know. Mm -hmm. 
And I don't want, I don't want you all to be that person. And, and now the next day I did. Yes. Um, plus many more fingerings, <laughs> but it's, it, it's our job to make sure that you, you have all the tools and you're good to go. Yes, absolutely. I, I didn't have this question prepared or anything, but I just kind of thought of it. Obviously it's important to have a method book, but I know you've talked to us a lot about how we need to supplement out other materials as well. What would you have to say about that? Well, the f one of the things that I want everyone to always remember, the method book is not the teacher, you're the teacher. Mm -hmm. And we've talked a lot about the habits book. It, it, regardless of what book you, you use, you're the teacher. And um, I'm a big believer of calls and responses for beginners because you can have them playing all kinds of things that are way technically above the skill level of a beginning book. So that, that's all a good thing with a groove track going behind you just to, to keep, it, keep everything together. Um, but other supplemental things, I'm a big fan of showing them because this is their generation. Um, the kids that are sixth, seventh, and eighth graders in high school right now are so into technology. Um, I would come up with any type of, of technology to supplement what you are doing. It could be... Um, using a document camera so they can see a full score. Mm -hmm. um, it could be um, having them to do some composition. It could be using Flipgrid. It could be using smart music. It could be using music first, any of the technology programs. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Harmony Director is, is a great teaching tool. Um, I, I'm, I'm just all about supplementing right now anything we can with technology. Assigning them a YouTube channel, give them a, send them a link, have them watch it. Mm -hmm. um, there's there's tons of different ways that that we can use uh, technology. It's what they do. Yes. You know, and and let them use it in the classroom. Mm -hmm. Take out your phones. Um, many of these method books are loaded on Chromebooks. In schools have them, and they and so they can, they they're using their Chromebook. It's op it's open right there. Great. Now go from there to Music Racer. And go in there and do a, another uh, note name game. Yeah. But I, we all need to boost the technology that we're using in our classroom. All right. So kind of moving back to the habits of a successful music education student book. Uh, what would you say are the most important takeaways or topics that readers should take away from the book? I, I am very fond of the very first chapter that tells it's really throwing it out there to the students what they need to do now what you can do now to prepare. Mm -hmm. This is out of class, okay? A additional things from the class. I think all of those are super important. I like the um, classroom management section, um, the teaching inventory database, how to teach phrasing, um, how, how to um, set up your beginners for success. I started many years ago, um, sending a survey to all my first year teachers at the end of their first year how did you do and better yet how did we do preparing you mm -hmm. and i tried to take all of what they thought they were the least prepared for and target it in this textbook and one of those things was one of the most difficult tasks all these first year teachers were saying was teaching my beginners Mm -hmm. when they came into the room i had a room full of students who knew nothing about instruments and they wanted to know um, really simple specifics like clarinet embouchure. You know, it's, how, am I, how am I going to tell them? Top teeth on mouthpiece, corners firm, long flat pointed chin, hold it by the barrel and know the pitch that the instrument's going to play. Mm -hmm. um, how to buzz on the mouthpiece. So, I, you know, I think, I think that whole beginning part is huge and very, 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 very important. Um, the resources for repertoire is good mm. and a lot of time and research went into coming up with that but what's most important to remember is that on the habits universal website the um repertoire list will be updated oh that's it's a great. constant update um in fact yesterday and today i was going through a lot of new music and i'm i'm compiling some lists now that we can add to it for this fall so it'll it'll be constantly updated that's a big bonus i like the fact that you can at the end of each chapter there's places for you to write habits to take with you yes and and i, th I think that's i think reflection is huge in education 
reflecting back on what you just learned. I like the section on writing lesson plans. I think it's simple. It's talking about going on a trip, planning, post-trip reflecting. So I, you know, I think, I think that's the simplified way of, of writing your lesson plans. And then I really like the ending of this when it says, do not lean against the wrong wall. And it's talking about um, this thing, work-life balance, which I don't think is, a th I don't think it's ever going to be a balance. Mm -hmm. It's a balance because sometimes it's heavy work and sometimes it's heavy life. Yeah. But very rarely is it going to be like this. Yeah. Even, even if we try to make it a priority. So that's a wonderful chapter on taking care of yourself and making sure that you're leaning against the right wall. That's really, really valuable. Mm -hmm. I think. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. I have a couple of just kind of fun questions okay. that we can, uh, <laughs> to end this end the interview here. Um, can you share a funny moment that you have had with a student over the years? Okay. I want to say that it's so important for you to have fun with your students. It doesn't matter if they're fourth grade, if they're seniors in high school, if they're seniors in college, find ways to have fun. Um, I had fun with my college students this past week at Conselmer Institute, and we got to sit around and we got to laugh. <laughs> we got to have funny conversations about other faculty and we just would crack up and it's a good thing I, I, I want my students to know that that i'm them we're we're, the, we're in this together yeah all right so specific funny things and zachary i've already told you this but, okay. but i remember when i learned the hard way how important it is to be specific in maintenance of your instruments yes and I was explaining to a trumpet player who was playing a trumpet that belonged to great aunt Susie, had been in the attic for, oh, 20 or more years, how to clean this. And, and I was telling the student to pull the slides out, take the valves out, put it in warm water in a bathtub, and gave the student all snakes, gave the, gave the student all these cleaning supplies. And I said, just do that first. And not knowing that a clarinet player was taking copious notes and went home with her new buffet R13 and gave it a bath and came it back came back to school the next morning in tears, uh, just completely distraught. It, it's funny to look back on right now. It wasn't funny at the time, yeah. and of course I didn't laugh at the student, mm -hmm. but I I did get her to smile and we we laughed about it and i said you know you know you're so smart you listened to exactly you did exactly what i was saying but the key word was for the trumpet and and now i'm very specific with every single instrument on care and maintenance yes um and having them to understand and i tell that story to them over and over that that happened and it all worked out great we we got another um her she had ins insurance on her instrument so it was okay but it worked out great i had another funny story one year i was in going to festival in georgia and it was really hot the end of march the first of april riding school buses it had about an hour bus ride and i took four bands over the past over a period of three days mm -hmm. and the last my last band was the last band to perform of the day and this is this is really a very funny story okay and it was so hot, and so I, I was not going to wear my outfit that I was wearing to conduct in. I was just going to wear my school clothes, jump into the restroom for the fourth band, okay? Knew the school by then, knew where they were, where the restrooms were, and I'll just jump in, pop into the restroom, change clothes, and I wouldn't be so hot and miserable on the school bus, yeah, on air-conditioned school bus. Stopped by the dry cleaners that morning, picked up that outfit that I was going to wear. It was just a black suit, black pants, black top, mm -hmm. okay? and um black jacket go into the restroom change go in to warm up my band the last group to play is a unbelievably fantastic band and we were going to rock the house and we did mm -hmm. we did despite my wardrobe malfunction uh -oh. and um but i picked up my my suit from the cleaners i did not know that when i zipped my pants up in the back had a zipper in the back mm -hmm. um the teeth had been mashed flat in the dry cleaners. So you could pull the zipper 
handle up and it felt like you zipped up your pants, but you didn't because uh -oh. the zipper didn't close. <laughs> and I didn't know that. And I walked out to my band and I turned around backwards to make sure that the tuner was plugged in or whatever. And they were horrified and they were screaming X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. And I was going, what are you talking about? To make a long story short, um, I had two student teachers then, and they went across the street from the school, happened to be a mall. Grab, we're going to get a pair of pants for me, okay? And I was going, we go on the stage in 30 minutes. <laughs> I will just wrap my coat around my waist and go on with it. We were standing on the stage. My students were just horrified that I was going to look unkept at this event. And the announcer says, the final band to perform is, and about that time, here come student teachers bursting in backstage, handing me a pair of pants. I uh, pulled the wings around of the curtain around, down, up with the good ones, put my jacket on, walked out on stage, and I turned around backwards, you know, to the mm. audience like that, so that my students could see that she does have on pants that zip. <laughs> and turned around and looked at them and smiled, and they just went, they just nodded their head and went, yes. You know, they did not want to be embarrassed. That's a funny story from my, my perspective. Yeah. <laughs> Lesson learned when you take your clothes to the cleaners, go try every part of it out before you go on the stage. Oh my gosh, that is so good. <laughs> um, okay, just one last thing. Uh, what job would you have chosen for yourself if it was not being a band director? I know that's kind of a hard thing to picture. Yeah. Well, so I'll tell you what, Zachary, when I was a senior in high school, we were had we had required meetings with counselors mm -hmm. to figure out where you're going to school and what career path if you wanted to go for on to school yeah and i remember i thought having that meeting and the counselor saying well what what do you like to do and i said i like to go to the band room you know um so i knew i wanted to i knew i wanted to be a band director you know i i don't know maybe there was a time when I thought it would be fun to be a librarian, hmm. which is hysterical because yeah. I don't organize things that well. <laughs> so um, probably another subject teacher. I, I don't know. I'm very interested right now in caring for um, the geriatric world. I think people are living longer and longer. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to start learning how to care for people that live into their 90s or more. Yeah. Um, so... That, that I guess that that's an interest of mine. I'm also very have also been ex my whole life been interested in um, physical activity. Mm -hmm. Played basketball on our school team, uh, yeah. and I, this, I've always been I was all these big Reebok certified t exercise trainers. So I'm I like I like that too. Um, but I want to teach I want to teach students to to um, play instruments yeah and I want to teach them the right way yeah uh, and I don't you know I used to would see, when you see ensembles perform and there's just so many easy fixes that could happen um that's why I say they've got to have professional development directors have to keep going and um I want to add one final thing I want I want teachers to know how much they're valued and mm -hmm. right now they they don't feel it. Yeah. And I, I I believe personally I believe that we're about to, the pendulum is about to swing, and I think teacher salaries are going to go way up. I think the perception of a teaching profession is going to go back into the status that it used to be in, where it was a, considered a highly respected field. Mm -hmm. I, I had I found this quote in some of my research was teach students with only the best mm. which to me translated into only the best people should be the teachers yes and, and i try to tell our students here at western the best musicians need to be the music teachers they don't say oh i want to be a performance major and i'll get a music ed degree to fall back on that's that's yes. so wrong it's yes. the best musicians need to be the best or, or need to be the teachers because they're they're going to be the best teachers so I, I, right now, I, I just want to say a shout out to all the music teachers. You're important. And these students value you more than, it's, it's immeasurable how yeah. much the students 
will adore and work for their teachers. Yes. But they need to know first that the teachers care. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I just, uh, I want us to take care of teachers. So that's a big goal. 100%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dr. Land, thank you so much for taking the time to out of your day to do this interview. I learned so much. I think this was really valuable and will be really valuable for all of our music educators that are out there. Um, so yeah, just thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you, Zachary. I'll look forward to doing more of these. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Bye-bye. Y'all, I really hope you got something out of this conversation and were maybe even taking some notes. Because let me tell you, I enjoyed every single moment of doing that interview as Dr. Land was sharing just so much value and knowledge. I even liked the jazz concert we were getting in the background. But in case it wasn't clear already, I want to make sure I extend my greatest thanks to Dr. Land for allowing me the opportunity to interview her. And hey, if you want to see more content like this, make sure you subscribe and hit that like button. That way you never miss another video. Until then though, I hope you have a great week and I'll see you in the next video.